Hello, welcome to a new video. And in this video, we're doing something slightly different for the channel. And sort of thrifting and, and buying clothes and trying to make money, we're spending money, but as little money as we can. Right now, I'm in my kitchen and my kitchen is finished. This video, though, is about how do we get to this point. I'm going to take you through a nice step by step guide on how we got here right now. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Now, step number one, and I'd say this is a pretty important one, it's to have a kitchen. Now, in order to transform a kitchen, you need to kind of start with one in the first place. If you don't really have a kitchen, I would advise fitting the kitchen first and then come back to the video. Now, step number two is what I call creating the vibe. Now, as you can see behind me, we have quite a bit of a theme here, the jungle theme. This is the vibe that I've gone for. Now, in order to decide which way you're going to go with your transformation, your renovation, your makeover, whatever you want to call this, you need to decide on a style. It's no good having all sorts of different things that don't fit together. Find a style that, you know, works for you. Whether you read magazines, whether you break into people's houses and decide which one you'd rather live in, it's up to you. Now, in our case, we went to the epicenter, the central hub of pure design. IKEA. As you can see from this little photo diary I've put together here, we came across multiple kitchen designs that really shouted out to us. A few different things that we could, uh, you know, steal from. Now, IKEA we use as inspiration, and not actually for really any of what we put into the kitchen, because at the end of the day, you need to stick to a budget. Now, this is quite an important step for most of us, especially if we're going to call this a budget transformation. You need to decide what your budget actually is. Now, if your budget's 10, 15, 20,000 pounds or dollars or whatever you use, then this isn't really a transformation. You might as well just buy a new kitchen, in which case IKEA is a good option. But in our case, our budget was what I call spending as little as humanly possible. To put that into monetary terms, you're trying to stick around two or three hundred pounds and completely change the kitchen. Now, as you'll see in the clips that I'm overlaying here, we started with a fairly nice kitchen. It was about 10 years old. We actually live in a two bed apartment and this is a really good size, but I didn't really like the fact that it felt so bright and open and clinical. I wanted something dark, something cozy. But the kitchen itself, the cabinets, um, you know, the utilities, everything was fine. So that means we could really save in the budget. So it was basically just redecorating, you know, the definition of a makeover. Now on to the next step. And a pretty important part of the kitchen is the kitchen cabinet. It is the actual structure of a kitchen. Now we're quite lucky in the fact that we've got a lot of cabinets. The only problem we had is I did not like this light maple colour. You might like this light maple colour, but much like a teenage emo, I wanted things to get a lot darker. But how are we going to get from this to this? Now, many people choose to paint their cabinets, but for us, we have curved and laminated cabinets and also live on a top floor apartment with no outside space private to us. Painting, therefore, is not an option. So the method we decided on was wrapping the cabinets with vinyl wrap, to be specific, DC fixed. Now this video isn't sponsored because barely anyone will watch it, but if it does get a lot of views, you never know, they might well drop us a few pennies. Now the wrap comes in rolls, much like this, with guide paper there. I'm gonna show you a bit of a montage now of what they look like before and what they look like after. It's almost a miracle. Now, I'd like to say that the wrapping process was easy, took no time at all, and wasn't fiddly. But like a politician, I would be lying. Instead, over several days, armed with this knife, this miniature travel hairdryer, and this handy little scraping tool, I wrapped the cabinets one by one. This process took several weeks and lots of boredom. But anyway, I prevailed, and as you can see behind me, these cabinets have magically changed colour. But the cabinets wasn't the only thing that we needed to wrap. These countertops as well were not to my liking. As you can see, these look like wood, but it's actually plastic. And as you'll also see in the image I'm overlaying right now, 
compared to a real life dead piece of wood versus the not so real life plastic wood is a pretty good map. One thing to note here is trying to wrap a countertop on your own is almost impossible. My advice therefore is go to a public place, maybe like a park. Find a stranger, befriend them, really become friends over the next few months, you know, form a really good bond, ask them to come round, help you with your kitchen, and then after that, immediately never speak to them again. The next step in our journey to transform this kitchen was to get out the paintbrushes. I decided the best thing to try and paint first were these tiles. They were a weird cream and grey random pattern. As you can tell by my mumbling then, it was hard to describe exactly what they were. I decided that, you know, they needed to go darker, so again opted for black. Now instead of retiling, I decided tile paint would be a quick and easy option. It turned out it was not quick or easy. The tile paint advertised itself as being one coat. As you can see in these clips here, one coat did not look very good. But as you can see in these clips here, three coats looked okay. Now to make the grout not black but white, we used a white paint pen. This was just about the easiest and most enjoyable part of the process. Now the walls themselves started off as green and I decided that I wanted them to be green. But not the green that they were, the light sort of sage green is a fairly popular colour but as I've made everything else darker, I thought, why not the walls as well? We opted to go for a Valspar kitchen paint from our local b and I cannot remember what the colour called, so I will refer to it as green. As you can see in these clips here, after the first coat, I was quite panicked. It wasn't going on like any paint I had before. It was quite light and quite patchy. But much like watching the TV series Breaking Bad, if you persevere through the start, it gets pretty good in the end. And as you can see, it's a nice rich green colour. Now some people might love it, some people might hate it, but at the end of the day, I'm the only one that uses this kitchen, so it doesn't really matter. So the process of painting is pretty boring and unglamorous, so in this next time lapse, I've tried to make it look as sexy as possible. Now, as with any renovation project, the problem is it always takes a lot longer than you think it will. Now, to stay motivated, I've come up with a term that I call projectception, which is a project within a project. The first of which were these shelves behind us. Now, I did film a clip at the time talking you through the process, but in hindsight, I think it would actually be better if I was just to be a bit more concise and give you a realistic voiceover. So as you can see here, we went to Ikea and didn't fancy buying the cubes that were there. So I thought it would be a really easy process to just take some cabinet doors off and transform a cabinet into these four cubes. It turned out this process was not easy at all and I bought the completely wrong paint to do so. After again persevering with a paintbrush, it came out looking fairly okay and I put it all back together. I didn't realise quite how many cables there were with this IKEA lighting, so thank God I barely go into this other cabinet here. But much like a celebrity scandal, if you cover it up enough and put pretty things there to distract people, it will look okay in the end. The next project was finding some scrap wood in our storeroom and deciding to cut it down and stick it onto the end of one of the cabinets. You might think that measuring Cutting down and then gluing on the wood was a much more laborious and time consuming task and you would be correct. But at this point, I really, really just did not want to wrap any more cabinet. Now onto one of the final stages. This is where we add the finishing touches and really start adding the vibe. Now we decided to go for a jungle theme after being inspired by a collection of animal themed cups featuring famous jungle animals such as the Highland Cow. To make sure that people knew this was a jungle theme, as you can see behind me, we have plenty of jungle themed artwork. Much like most British art galleries, these were stolen from other places. Now as an affordable way to add artwork to your walls, we decided upon buying secondhand picture frames or frames from cheap places such as Poundland or as I assume in America, Dollarland. Now once you've acquired the frames, visit some stores that sell wallpaper and then steal as many samples as you can and put them into the frames. 
Now as you near the end of your project, one of the most important stages is to make sure that you're not financially ruined. If you've been doing this correctly, then hopefully as you've been going along, you've been keeping a record of how much you've spent. Now in our case, we managed to do the whole transformation for about £360. And for our European and American friends, I'll put somewhere on the screen the translation of how much that is. Now the final stage of the transformation is to don your favourite funky shirt, sit in your kitchen, and watch a cinematic montage of all the hard work you've just put in. As a bonus stage, you can subscribe to the channel. It won't help you in any way, but will make me feel slightly better about myself.